How you doing, Eric? There is coming a day you will stand before God. Well, preacher, I don't believe in God. And the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Well, you see, preacher, I'm an atheist. And the Bible says, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You don't believe in you don't believe in God. The Bible calls you a fool. I didn't say it. Psalms did. As a matter of fact, God said it twice in Psalms. You are a fool to say that there is no God. And then the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. That's going to be a kicker one day. You are going to meet the God you didn't believe in. And the God is not Allah, not the Pope, not a Baptist preacher, it's not a president, not Republican, not Democrat. He's the God Almighty God of Israel, Jehovah, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The creator of all. That's right, we were created. You see, science and education has it backwards. They say we came from the Big Bang. No, the Bible says the Big Bang is later. And all your intelligence, all your materialness, all your wealth, every material thing you got goes up in the Big Bang. That there's coming a day that God's going to show up at the great white throne judgment, and heaven and earth are going to flee. Because of the rover, because of the NASA Dragon space program, because of all the sins of mankind in this universe. Even the universe can't stand before a holy God, it's out, it burns up, flies up. So, reverse evolution. The Big Bang comes later. But you won't hear this in the school system. In the beginning, God created. You know why kids are killing kids today? It's because you've been teaching Darwinism. The biggest and fattest, greatest ape kills the other apes to get the monkey in the banana tree. That's evolution in a nutshell. They call it survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest is playing out in America today. I got the biggest gun, I got the most bullets, and I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to be number one. Until the other guy comes with the biggest gun, the biggest bullets, and the more bullets, and he kills me. And the preacher comes up with a King James Bible that says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That defiles what's being taught in the public schools. You want God to bless America, but God's not allowed in your schools. We don't want to hear about God in school. God bless America. God help us. God take care of us. Oh. That ain't going to happen. In God we trust, but you can't have the Ten Commandments in the courtroom. Now, why would you not want the Ten Commandments in a courtroom? Because they wouldn't be able to lie to you and say, well, I didn't do it. If it's posted on the court roof, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. 
Majority of your court cases are found in the Ten Commandments. Of course we don't want that. After all, us lawyers wouldn't be getting money. We couldn't charge $400 an hour to defend the guilt until proven innocent. You can't have God of the Bible if you cannot believe in God of the Bible. And you're not going to have God bless this nation when you are taking the enemies of the Bible, the enemies of the Jews, the enemies of Christianity. Well, they're nice people. I got a couple of nice friends. God ain't going to work with you. We got a culture of people where sin is legalized. A woman can walk into a medical office and have her baby aborted, murdered. And stand under the banner of God bless America. Something wrong with that. When a nation is against the police officers. And don't tell me they're bad police. There's a couple bad police officers, yes. But when you stand against the law, the God of law, and then you're going to go under the banner in God we trust, as a nation of people, you want to live godless and unlawful. Where God is rejected. We're coming to the, to the farmer's market. We heard a car with a loud stereo every week. And tonight we're going to hear those race cars. But when you try to preach Jesus Christ, the police are called. The law is sought. And you yourself, well, you know, I'm godly. I'm a Christian. I reject Jesus. I reject the preaching. But I'm godly. I'm Christian. America used to be a Christian nation. No more. Again, the schools of America have prayer mats. And they turn their children towards Mecca. That's not Christian. The schools of America will have their children do yoga. That's Asian religion. That's not Jesus Christ. We live in a world anything but God. And then when God gives us COVID-19, and God gave us COVID-19, and the panic spread out, six feet, wear a mask. And the first thing that closed down were churches. How strong is your God? When your place of worship closes down. Your God's not very powerful. If my God gave me COVID-19, he'll take care of me. If I die of COVID-19, I'll be absent from the body, present with the Lord. I'm not going to live in fear. The fear of the Lord is wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is to hate sin.
But the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins. All sins. Not just that sin. Well, you did that sin, you can never be forgiven. No, that's not God. The Lamb of God which cleanses from all sin. And the sin in that verse is singular. It's not the Lamb of God take away all sins. It's the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Sin is limped and lumped in one bucket, one pail, one burden. That when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died for all sins. There's nothing, there's no sin that Jesus Christ cannot cleanse you of. There is nothing that the blood of Jesus Christ can't cleanse. Whatever you've done, whatever you are guilty of, the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you. And you can be washed. And you can be made clean. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. That's God, not man. And to wash us, cleanse us. We bring our sins to the Lamb of God. We don't bring them to the priest of Baal. You can't go a sinner to a sinner and be cleansed. You can't bring your muddy car to a mud pit and have your car come out clean. You can't wash your face with a filthy face cloth. And a sinner can't come to a sinner for cleansing. It only makes it filthier. You must come to the sinless one. The blood of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. God is not willing that any should perish. God has done all he could and can for you to be saved. Not only did God suffer and die upon the cross of Calvary, according to the scriptures, it was buried. And arose again the third day according to Scripture. Not only did God do that, but you know what else God did? God sent a loud mouth preacher on Saturday morning for you to hear the gospel. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying God told me, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And whether there be many people here or there be a few people here, I'm going to preach Jesus. Because there's nothing better about than Jesus. Because with my heart I have believed on righteousness, and I cannot help but to confess my, with my mouth Jesus Christ. There is nothing better than Jesus Christ. Oh, preacher, I got my favorite NASCAR driver. Are you ever going to meet that driver? You know the probability of meeting your NASCAR driver? Very slim. And even if you see his car, he's got his car at the grocery store. That may not be his car. I'll tell you what you do, NASCAR fans. If, oh, look at that. This is my favorite car. It's my favorite driver. Look under the hood and see if there's an engine. Because a lot of those race cars that they send out, it's just a prop. 
like religion. It's just a prop. It's not real. Now, your odds of meeting your NASCAR driver, okay, maybe, if you're lucky enough. You know what the odds of me meeting Jesus Christ? 100%. Dead or alive, I will see Jesus. And God will be pleased with me because I have been washed through the blood of Jesus Christ. And not only will I 100% will see Jesus, so will you. Saved or lost, you may not meet your NASCAR driver. You may not meet that singer, that actor, that Paul, whoever it is that you want to meet, you may never meet that person. But the scriptures say, prepare to meet thy God. And you better meet him by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because if it isn't the blood of Jesus Christ, you will meet a wrathful, judgmental God that will cast your soul in the lake of fire that burns forever. As you declare, Jesus is the Lord. You're not going to get that in many Sunday morning messages today in America, in the world. I don't give fertilizer. I give fire and brimstone preaching. You put a preacher out there today, and you put a plant in front of his pulpit. All that fertilizer, that plant will grow into a bush. And then when I get in the pulpit, that bush sets on fire. It's amazing how Christians, you know, they say, call, oh, uh, 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 there's no hell. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Well, Jesus preached about hell. How can you say you are of Jesus and you don't believe what Jesus said? You would buy a chocolate chip cookie with no chocolate chips and call it a chocolate chip cookie. You got to sit down and look at your foolishness. Turn off the news, turn off the world and open your Bible and say, God, give me some wisdom in an unwise world. Because everything around me in this world is stupid. People don't know what sex they are. Stupid. I had to fill out a form the other day. Male, female, I don't know. Stupid. We, 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 we are a product of evolution, and not one human person ever on this earth witnessed an evolutionary act without man doing anything. Stupid. We're in a stupid generation with this COVID-19. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Get this shot. Get, get this shot. Well, you got to get a second shot. Well, now you may have to get a booster shot. And what's the preacher been saying for six years? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's the same message. Well, you know, Christians get get the COVID-19. Yeah, and when Christians die of COVID-19, they go to heaven. And when the lost die with the same COVID-19, they go to hell. And you did not need to go to hell. You could believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and die. And be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That simple.
You know, the true biblical Christian, we don't have prayer books. We don't have missiles. A true Christian, our prayers come from our heart. Our song comes from our heart. The Bible says, sing unto me a new song. It doesn't need to be written down. There is no turn to page such and such for our service to God. The Bible says, and Jesus says of himself, Jesus speaking, not me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So there's no other way. 